Hi, I'm Heather from Here Booktubes, and today's new adult romance recommendations. So this is pretty much 18 through 22, 23 year olds is what I am recommending now. I recommend a lot of romance based on trope and subgenre and theme like this. So if you want more romance recommendations, make sure you subscribe. I don't feel like you can talk about new adult without mentioning Sarah J Mass. Her books are new adult, I would say and they're phenomenal. They're why I found booktube. I love them, but almost everybody's heard about them. I'm not going to go into depth, but I do recommend Sarah J. Bass if you want fantasy romance. My first one is Misadventures of a College Girl by Lauren Rowe. This is in the Misadventures series, which are standalone romances. They aren't connected in any way. This one is about a virgin who has just started college and she's looking to get rid of her virginity. So she decides to pick a <clears throat> man, <laughs> at a college party and she picks our hero and he has kind of a douchey shirt on and he's a college football player. So she's like, all right, you're the one. And he is, he's down, he's down for it. And then he finds out that she's a virgin. He's like, uh, no, let's not do it like this. And so he becomes her teacher. <laughs> on the um the bedroom arts if you will and he has like a whole checklist a whole syllabus that he's working her through and it's just very entertaining this I love because it's a really healthy communication relationship and she I believe is a drama student and he's a college football player looking to go to the NFL and they kind of have opposing dreams and they don't put their dreams on hold in order to be in a relationship with each other they also don't let life tear apart their relationship and it made so much sense and it was so beautiful and it's funny and it's witty and he ends up being really sweet and I just I loved it I absolutely adored it and Brie from Love and Words raised about this book and I have to say it's a delight and really really fun then I have Rule, which is Marked Men, number one by Jay Cronover. A lot of the people in this series are new adult age, but not every single one of them are. But this one specifically is. So we have Rule, he's a bad boy, he's tattooed, and is a man whore, is just sleeping his way through his problems and drinking his way through his problems. And is just not in a great place honestly but he has this friend and really she was the best friend of his dead twin and she has not given up on him and she still makes him go to sunday dinner with the family or something like that and she is a good girl she is straight laced she is a virgin not all these books are virgin um and she has always loved him but he and his entire family believe that she was secretly dating his twin. And so to him, she is off limits forever. Well, <laughs> things happen. I think it's like her 18th birthday or something like that. And she like asked him to take her virginity or like he doesn't know that she's a virgin or something, but like as her birthday present. And then he's like, oh, what am I gonna do? And she's like, that's all I wanted. We good, we good. <laughs> and then he's like, I can't just walk away from you. And she's like, that's all I wanted, we're good. <laughs> it's just very entertaining. And I really loved her loyalty to her friend even after his passing and how even though that was kind of screwing up things for her in her life, her loyalty was still there and she refused to bend it and I loved the familial issues that they worked out the found family aspect the growth and the progression of their relationship their friend group all of their relationships I just really loved this series way back when I read it and he is they're 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 still one of my favorite couples I really adore them then I have Fallen Crest High by Tijin. I know, I know, you hear me talk about this all the time if you are a regular on my channel, but I freaking love this series. <laughs> it's less smutty than I normally read. It is a little bit more angst, a little bit more buildup than I normally read. 
but I have to tell you, I adore these main characters with my whole being. Mason and Sam and Logan, I love them. I love them so much. And I'm just like, oh, my precious little babies. Yeah, I just, I love them. So Sam is our main character and she is going through it. Her entire support system has kind of disappeared overnight. And she's a little bit of a not like other girls type of girl, but in a way that she doesn't really view herself that way. She's just like, I've got real problems. This is stupid. I don't care about being popular at this party. Like, I'm sorry, but I just don't care. And so I love her so much. You don't even know. You don't even know. She is so awesome. And honestly, this goes from like her junior year in high school all the way through college. And the growth in this series, not only of the characters themselves, not only of them just getting older, more secure in their relationship with each other, but also the members that they add on to their found family. And it's beautiful. <laughs> So this is kind of marketed as a stepbrother romance or a bully romance, but really, so Sam's whole support system has fallen apart and her mom has left her dad for a rich man and is like, you're moving in with me, yada, yada, yada. And she has a very bad relationship with her mom. A lot of this doesn't come to light right at the beginning, but she has a very bad relationship with her mom. And so she's kind of devastated a little bit, shut down emotionally quite a bit. But the rich man has two sons, Mason and Logan. Mason is going to be Sam's soulmate. Okay. All right. Logan is the funny, easygoing, not easygoing. He's not easygoing. <laughs> He's the one that like helps make it all work and draws her in and I just love them so much. Like I cannot talk about this book series without wanting to reread it. That's how it is. I adore it so much. So she moves in and Mason and Logan both are very protective. They will hurt you. They will destroy your life to protect what matters to them. And if you matter to them, nobody is gonna mess with you. And Sam matters to them and I just love it. Now there are things that she goes through that they can't necessarily protect her from, but man, they will get revenge. They will make you wish you had made a different decision. And Sam moves in and doesn't want anything from them, isn't playing games, isn't trying to use them to rise in the hierarchy of high school drama. And nobody's like that. Nobody's like that. So they test her out a couple different times and she just, she doesn't freaking care. Her life is in shambles. She does not care about the popular kids. And I just love them so much. There are so many scenes. Again, this isn't a super smutty series, but there are so many scenes in this series where I'm just like, mm, oh, yes, we're getting to my favorite part. It's so good. It's so good. And like, don't just read the first one, people. Don't just read the first book. It is really good. But there's so much stuff in the other books that are just equally amazing and fantastic. And then when the series ends, where they end up and the happiness, it's so good. Then I have Boys of Brescia High by Megan Brady. Sorry, I'm still trying to come off my high from talking about Cedar Crest High. This is over the top drama, craziness, gang type stuff. It's insane and addictive. I read all three books in two days. It was crazy good. I actually really recommend Tijin and Megan Brandy both as authors for New Adult in general. I've read several of their books. Just excellent. So Raven moves to Brayshaw High. Is that right? It might be. 
and she has been taken from a bad home situation and put in a girl's home, which is actually kind of on the property of the Brayshaw boys. And she's, <clears throat> she's not just blending in. She's kind of there to stir up trouble and takes on the ruling boys at the school right away, which nobody do, does. They can't allow the slide because then where would law and order go? So they kind of take her on and sparks fly. <laughs> so they are really butting heads. And also she's really falling for like the main guy, the leader. And then there's one menage style scene, but this is not a reverse harem. It's just kind of reverse harem-ish in that it's the three boys and her. They are like a unit, but she only really has a relationship with one of them. And then the other boys get their own books with their own girls. But this does take place over the course of the trilogy. I think there's a little bit of cliffhangers on the first two books, but it is over the top, gripping drama, will suck you in, will not let you go. If you can read these books and just put them down, then maybe they're not for you because I could not put them down. It was crazy. I was sucked in so deeply and it's just so rare sometimes, you know, to get that feeling. And these books gave it to me. Then I have Ace of Hearts, which is F.U. High, number one by Ella Good. These are novellas and they are feel good, happy, funny, sarcasm, banter novellas. This is literally F.U. High. <laughs> And this like straight A student, she falls for this new football player who is like such a great guy. And she's like, uh, football players, not great guys. And he's like, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> and he like proves it. And he like messes with her right away. He like sees her. And then he tells his mom, like, I met my future wife today and stuff like that. It's just really cute. And I really love them a lot. I really love the series. It was just such a pick me up so entertaining, so light and fluffy. Like if you just need a feel good book, this is it. And it's quick and entertaining. And yeah, just makes you feel good to read it. Then I have Hate, which is Madison Kate number one by Tate James. This is a reverse harem. I had to throw a reverse harem and actually I've read a weird amount, I feel like, of high school reverse harems. Because honestly, how is that realistic? This is not actually high school. She is in college. But Basically, this is bully, hate to love, over the top to the point of being annoying, but is actually addictive, reverse harem. So basically they ruined her life and it's been a year and she's back for revenge. Now, this does not work out great for her. I have to say, you're kind of just like, why do you think you can win? But, and then finds out that like, she's gonna be living with them and there's some angst in this. There's some, okay, so there's three different guys. So like one or two of the guys are much lower angst than like the main guy. He holds out for freaking ever. <laughs> but it was really good, highly entertaining. I read all four books in a month and when they, when like the last one came out and it was really, really something. Very smutty. Very, very smutty. And yeah, she's like 19, 20 in there. <laughs> Younger than that when the book starts, but most of the storyline takes place when she, I believe she's already 19. Uh, yeah, if you want over the top drama in every way possible, trigger warnings for stalker, sexual assault, death of a loved one, um, violence against others, lots of violence, actually, lots of different types of violence. This is gang related activity, murder happening all over the place. So it is a dark romance. So do be aware of that. Definitely trigger warnings. And then lastly, I have A Lesson in Blackmail by Katie Robichox, or as Jen said, Robichal? 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 I don't know, but this book was everything my little heart desired and I did not know that I needed it. So this is a BDSM, high school bully-ish. He's only a bully for like a chapter. <laughs> librarian, 22 year old librarian romance. This 
It's so good. I love this book so much. I like need to reread it pronto. Let me tell you, I need to reread this book. So he's very alpha. He is very dominant, but he kind of doesn't know about the existence of BDSM. And I'm kind of like, what porn are you searching? It's fine. But she is a very submissive person in general. A lot of times you'll have characters specifically um, for BDSM where they're submissive sexually, but in real life, they're like type A, very controlling, you know, and get things done. They're boss babes, if you will. And then the submissive aspect kind of allows them to release all the control that they hold so tightly to all the time. This is kind of the opposite. This girl is submissive all the time. That is who she is. And there are many things in this book, especially if you have read <laughs> or involved in BDSM quite a bit, you're like, uh, that's not what we do, folks. Uh-uh, that's not healthy. All of that gets addressed in the book. So all of the kind of missteps and weirdness, if you will, at the beginning of the book, get addressed in the book. So it takes it from being like kind of toxic and not great at all to so freaking healthy. It's so good, such good communication, such a good relationship, such a caring couple. So anyways, the student, he messes with this librarian all the time. His family owns the school. He can get away with anything that he wants. And he wants her. But he's not doing anything really except messing with her. Well, then he has an obsessive compulsion and goes to her house to check on her. She's leaving in a trench coat on heels. He follows her to the BDSM club. She's early. There's no bouncer at the door. He follows her in, sees what she's up to, and is like, come here. So then he makes her go home with him, and then they uh, have a relationship. She, in the meantime, is freaking out. She's like, oh, my God, he's going to blackmail me. He's going to ruin my life. If anybody finds out that this is what I do, I'm going to lose my job. They will blackball me. This is my dream job. I will never get another one. She's freaking out, and he's just like, how do I make her mine? And it's so good. It's so good. And, yes, the beginning, you're like, um, that's not healthy. But it all gets addressed in the book, and it's so freaking good. If you want to read about an 18-year-old alpha guy learning to be a dominant and a 22 year old very submissive librarian who kind of helps introduce him to the BDSM lifestyle and you get some very hot scenes and just a great storyline. It's so freaking good. I can't tell you enough how good this is and it's short and it's good and it's amazing and I loved it so much. So those are some recommendations for a new adult. Do you read a lot of new adult? Do you not? It definitely has its devoted <laughs> lovers and haters, but I enjoy it mixed in with all the other romance that I read. And these are some really good ones. If you have a favorite author, be sure and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.